You know what 420 is, right? Um, yeah. It's code for adults who still watch cartoons. Ugh. All right, Velma kind of sucks. I know, I'm not shocking anybody here. As hating Velma has become the internet's new favorite pastime, with no amount of context being able to save any of these clips. Just two episodes in, everyone just gave up on it. But I'm here to tell you that the first two episodes are the worst ones. And even though Velma gets better as it goes, I still wouldn't call it good. As the show suffers from constantly fighting itself, everything from its type of humor to the characters to the very franchise it's adapting, this show is at odds with itself. It has massive issues, but to me, the writing for Velma as a main character is the thing that breaks it. Like this show wanted to be tongue in cheek, but all it ended up doing was biting its own off. So, I'm a few weeks late to the hype train, but the season's over, so I figured I might as well just give my thoughts about why this show didn't work. I'm out past curfew, and I think the movie Serpico is boring. What are you gonna do about that? So just a quick couple things I liked. Fred's great, vocal cast is putting in the work, the visuals and the background jokes are actually really good, with the animation and visual style making this probably the best looking Scooby-Doo show ever, with a special shout to all the hallucinations just being peak. Moving on, let's talk about the show's main problem, and just gonna rip the band-aid right off. Velma as a main character is difficult to like. Writing-wise, she is trapped in a death spiral, as the show puts her in a weird position of being both the Rick and the Morty of this show. I know, this is a weird analogy, but just go with me. See, much like Rick, Velma is an obnoxious, cynical know-it-all that treats everyone around her like dog shit, and who we want to see be taken down a peg. That is how she is presented as. Yet she is also presented as a series punching bag, someone we're supposed to feel bad for when terrible things happen, also making her this show's Morty. And this creates a paradox where she can't be competent enough for us to overlook her flaws like Rick, or sympathetic enough that when bad things happen, we want to actually help her like with Morty. The series wants to have it both ways, and that's what fucks over her character royally. As yes, she does have issues. Her mom disappeared, that's gonna mess you up. But being mean to your bullies is one thing. Hell, even her dad kinda has it coming. Yet, when she's a dick to everyone, and especially her friends, we start to have problems. Simply proposing we share Norville. I get a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and whenever I have a casual whim. Like, wow, is she awful to Norville. Like, this is not a two-way friendship. The show very much implies that she only hangs out with him when it's convenient, when she needs his car, and the only time they study together is when she wants to cheat off his homework. She treats him like a joke and gets mad when he doesn't drop everything to come and help her. They don't hang out in social situations, she seems like she can barely tolerate him at all times, and he is her one and only friend. I know this is a series where she's supposed to have flaws, and she's meant to learn a lesson and change as a person as the series goes on, but... I don't really feel like it sticks. How the show goes about giving her character development is very half-assed. Even the episode that is ostensibly all about calling her out about how she treats Norville does a really bad job at selling her learning the lesson. As she spends the entire episode getting called out, and immediately afterwards is trying to guilt trip Norville into helping her. Norville, in light of the recent revelation I take advantage of you, I couldn't expect you to do this for me. Guess my house will just get destroyed. Then when she doesn't learn the lesson to get his help, proving what a good person Norval is that they then immediately undercut by making him seem like a dork, the thing that gets her to realize that he's a good person, who deserves to be treated better, is this. I mean, if we don't support a small business owned by a woman of color, who will? Wow, Norville. There's no extra scene missing. That tacked on speech is what makes her change her mind, and it's a whole lot of nothing. But it happens, and then they follow up that growth of treating people better by having her emotionally manipulate Daphne, faking a hallucination to rip her away from her other friends, and to try and kill Gigi or Norville just to save her own life. Like she was actually trying to kill one of them to get away. Because she's an asshole, and that's supposed to be funny. The rock can move, one of us can wiggle out. And to avoid issues of sizeism, it should be me. Now, I love me a traumatized hot mess but you can't really pull that off if you don't care about them as a person, or at the very least, how they interact with the rest of the world. To bring it back to Rick and Morty, Rick 
is a dick who mistreats his grandson. He is very unlikable in that regard. So to compensate, they often have him fight people that are worse than him, to make him look better by comparison, and to redirect that bitchy energy at someone who deserves it. Velma doesn't do this. She isn't given the chance. The serial killer spends most of the series off screen. Daphne is set up to be the principal antagonist that Velma has to deal with. Only by episode two, they kissed. So rather than this being a fun character she can rip into without consequences, anytime they fight, she's now damaging her most significant relationship. This show really doesn't have a villain that Velma can fight on a day to day that will make her look better. So she's trapped always being the one that people point to as the worst. Like the only people we really have left are the mean girls, who are somehow able to make Velma also look like the bad guy. Mom, I just made Daphne vulnerable. I win. Now laugh as we watch her precious popularity fade away. Now the popular girls are a collection of cliches. They've apparently been bullying Velma for years, mocking her appearance, just being out of pocket 24-7, yet they aren't written as antagonists. They're supposed to be the potential victims of the next murder, so they can't really be that force that Velma goes up against either. What's worse, their mistreatment of Velma is treated as a joke, yet when Velma is mean back, instead of a bunch of cliches, they're revealed to be intelligent and socially conscious abhorring how Velma would try to shame Daphne for seeking help with her mental health in front of the school, yet have no problem picking on her in front of the band who are playing in front of the entire town. Also, for a show that loves talking about how unfairly Velma is treated for not being traditionally beautiful, it just loves to rag on the band geeks, treating them like they're subhuman losers, which comes off as punching down, especially since it goes out of its way to make the bully popular kids nuanced. A little hypocritical, that. And the thing that kills me is that every time Velma almost has a point, the show undercuts her. The show frames her as a killjoy, even when she's technically correct. Like when she calls out missing white women syndrome, how the town had such a huge response over these high school girls going missing, versus the lack of response to her own mother's disappearance, they groan. And then the show doesn't push back on that idea that she is right when she is. Velma, in her arrogant, misguided way, tries to help the popular girls, taking the time to point out all the constrictive female beauty standards, wanting to deprogram them of that. Except no. Two. Eh. Ooh, they are so hot, daddy likey. These girls dress like this because they want to, and they own it. And Velma is somehow worse than the patriarchy in her narrow view of women. Also, these are the same girls who would sexually harass police officers the next episode. And this is something that the show does constantly. It pulls out the rug from underneath Velma, leaving her without a leg to stand on. She is made to be unsympathetic, even though she has sympathetic reasons. She points out something that is an actual real-life problem, but then the story frames her as annoying and the one who is being a dick, with it then having to rush her getting character growth to correct for that. This happens every single time, so it never feels substantial or earned. And honestly, it doesn't ever feel like she learns most of these lessons. More often than not, it feels like she just doesn't have to deal with the problem. And what makes this even more annoying to me personally, all of this undercutting is followed up by downplaying the negative effects of the patriarchy, by betraying the town officials as comically sexist and completely inept and harmless. It's such an easy fix in my mind that these jackasses are the ones Velma should be pitted against, as it represents the very unfair system and no one cares when you mock them. This would be a perfect chance to show off her intelligence, to outwit these dumbasses, and to let her shine. Instead, what we get is a switcheroo on the mean girl cliches who are still mean by the end of it, minus Gigi, or have the people that Velma is most personally against who are part of the police, be Daphne's detective moms. Because we gotta love women versus women. This just creates a bad image problem for Velma that goes just beyond the show trying to make her a flawed teenager. She's never given a chance to be truly right about anything that isn't her mom disappearing. But this is a mystery show. That's like saying a fish can swim. It's to be expected. All Velma really gets are these tacked on conclusions that just happen instead of really building to a character turn. All this stems from the fact that the show desperately wants to be self-deprecating. To have Velma be this know-it-all who gets proven wrong and draw comedy from that. But it also wants to make her sympathetic in a series where it made her out to be the worst. There's self-deprecation, and then there's whatever this is. She's unsympathetic. And that is the kiss of death for any show. And it wants to go after everyone. But Velma's character is the one truly taking the hit. With there just not being enough positive moments of her doing cool shit to balance it out. Like, there is another way though, besides giving her worse people to fight. 
The other way to make this type of character work is to make them extremely competent, to give them moments where they can be badass. People, sadly, will forgive a lot if they can do something well and are entertaining while doing it. But unfortunately, Velma is a shit detective. Like, this blew my mind when I realized this. Like, it's shocking how little she actually does. Like, I need to break this down. So when Brenda is murdered, Velma has to find the real killer. She doesn't do anything. Norville is the one who comes to the conclusion that Brenda went missing because she took photos in the Spooner's bathroom. Then Daphne drops the exact piece of info she needed after Velma's first guess was wrong. So you think- No, I know Brenda was murdered to keep that photograph from getting out. Fred's so self-conscious about his body, he kicks everyone out of the bathroom at Spooner's malt shop when he has to use it. The bathroom at Spooner's malt shop? Oh. My. God. Like, I don't really think that's good detective work. There's no real effort she has to exert to reach that conclusion. It is practically gift-wrapped to her. If the story had had her instead clock Fred's weird obsession with people not seeing his dick, remove Daphne just outright telling her specifically that Fred always kicked other people out of the bathroom, you could then have Velma on her own figure out the facts instead of just being handed the answer. She isn't being a good detective. Other people told her the key bits of info she needed to be wrong. And this just keeps happening. When it comes to gathering clues, she barely does anything. Episode 3. Norville is the one who gets Fred to confess that Velma's mom was at his house the night she disappeared. Episode 4. Fred is the one who sneaks into his father's study to find evidence about his home's previous owner, Dr. Perdue, with Velma's ten-head idea being to go check the museum where the next clue just happens to have been. Only, the clue's not there. But rather than figuring out in her own way of how it was her mom who checked out the books last, show some actual detective skills, there's just a note telling her this. With all the actual info about Dr. Badoo coming from, again, Norville, who got his mom and dad to tell Velma the whole story about his crazy grandma and her brain experiments. They tell her about the underground lab in Fred's house, where the next clue is just sitting in the middle of the room. Jinkies! Jinkies? Why are you saying jinkies? And it's her dad who realizes that it's her mom's handwriting. Even the invisible ink on the card isn't something that she truly works to figure out. Rather, she just happens to be using her mom's old manuscript as a fly swatter, which just so happens to be about Detective Jinkies, the exact thing she was looking for. Her mom left a hint about a detective who discovered a way to find hidden messages and whoop, on to the next clue. Even when they get the killer's phone, it's Daphne who figures out how to get into it using blacklight. Meanwhile, Velma is just there. Penultimate episode, she's still just here, doing a stupid liar reveal where she's just being shit to Shaggy again and just waiting for her mother to tell her the answer after stumbling into another clue. Okay, well, this is starting to look like a false alarm. Finale. Daphne's deadbeat birth mother found a watch in the caverns, dropped it off at her daughter's locker after stealing from her. Just... That's what happened. Velma does actually remember the general guy's name, but then she recognizes the logo on the watch. Not because Fred drew the logo, and it has been a recurring background visual of the show, but because it was on her glasses with the family brand. And Google told her that Fred's mom was the general's daughter. She doesn't have any creative or smart ways of solving her own mysteries. She's continually gift-wrapped answers by the plot and other characters. The only real thing that you can say, oh yeah, she definitely figured that out, was the fact that she realized, oh Fred, can't cut shit, can't cut open heads. She made the connection, but it's not a giant leap. These never feel like moments of insight where it all comes together. It's always just so easy and clean cut. This erodes her status as an actually good detective, downplays her intelligence, and makes it feel like she's not really earning that next step, robbing us of the joy of watching her solve mysteries, of actually enjoying this side of the show. Velma doesn't need to do everything on her own, but when you're looking for reasons to enjoy the being around her, this show stripped away one of the easiest ways to make her entertaining, leaving her flaws to be all the more glaring and more insufferable. Throw on the fact that her hallucinations, while beautifully animated and a little bit scary at first, immediately just become a joke. Uh, does anyone have a defibrillator? They took an opportunity to feel sympathy for her and stripped it away. All of this builds to the paradox of her character, but the show wants her to be both the arrogant top dog we want to tear down for comedy, and the underdog who is made out to be almost as bad as her bullies. 
The show keeps wanting to have it both ways, so she is just left dead in the water. And I feel like this applies to most of the other aspects of this show. But also find Fred attractive. He has this deep, inexplicable magnetism. That's called being rich, but go on. Everyone here is a dick. Is this a show about mocking cliches? It indulges in all of them. Norville is just mocked for being a beta male, with his affections for Velma getting him laughed out of the room. So you think we're supposed to feel sympathy for him, right? Well no, because he's also passive aggressive as fuck, who is desperate for Velma to love him back. Even when she tells him she doesn't see him like that, he keeps pushing, even suggesting that they make out when she's having a hallucination. It is a massive case of nice guy syndrome, then it wants to turn around and say, oh yeah, normal, he is really a nice guy. It just doesn't work. It wants to have it both ways. Norville is terrible to his girlfriend Gigi. Also, for what it's worth, Daphne is technically hotter, you just have a mildly better personality. <sighs> like Gigi might be the only nice character in the show, but I also think that's just because Norville looks so bad by comparison. Daphne can be just as problematic as Velma, but at least they don't undercut her scenes where we're supposed to find her sympathetic. I think Fred is the only character that fully works in this show, mostly because Glenn Howerton is killing it in this role, but he's a jackass narcissist, who even after he learns about feminism, still makes it about him. Shush, a feminist is speaking. Fred is the butt of his own joke, but the show is consistent in how it wants us to perceive him. Which, speaking of comedy, let's talk about this show's jokes. I'll tell you everything when we get out of here. Now get in this mystery jalopy. I think it has something to do with drugs, which I hate. So Velma indulges in a lot of meta humor. It loves to point out tropes and conventions of storytelling, to look as dead in the eye and wink as it thinks pointing out a cliche somehow gives it a free pass to do it too. The meta humor in Velma is easily the worst part of it. Mostly because this series doesn't really have anything to say about it. So they never amount to anything more than a groan as it points out the thing you're already aware of and does nothing with it. Meta humor as is has long overstayed its welcome. Once it was fun and quirky for shows to point out they were in a show or to point out the cliches of the medium that they were in. But now everyone and their mother is doing it. So what was once unconventional has become convention and has become a lazy free pass to do a cliche, but then acknowledge that you're doing a cliche and then to just move on. Even though technically, nothing has happened except waste your time. But I do have to give credit that even the first opening minutes of the show tells you exactly what you're in for. As in the narration from Velma, she talks about how this is her story and this origin story isn't like the other girls. Normally origin stories are about tall handsome guys struggling with the burden of being handed even more power. Hey, what made this hot chick go crazy? So here's the thing for me personally. I didn't really laugh at that. Maybe I'm wrong. But for me, it feels like the show is just throwing shade at other origins. It's not making an actual joke about them. It's stating the thing other shows do without providing any real extra reasons about why I should care about this one. There's no, these guys are shit, but I'm gonna do this better type moment for me. No, you're just saying these other guys, they suck. And to make this even worse, right after that, she proceeds to take credit for creating the mystery gang, claiming it wasn't Fred in his weird sex van, and like the show just started. And we find out later that this is pretty on brand for Fred. But as an intro, it does set the tone of the series, but it's not selling it. We're not given anything to really win us over, and adds worse, it feels like the show is denigrating the thing that people already know and love. Like this show is gonna get hated on no matter what, because take your pick. But it does itself no favors that it starts this way, by starting out throwing side-eye at previous conventions of the franchise. The show doesn't hate Scooby-Doo, but it's plagued by the fact that it thinks it's so much funnier than it is, when really what it ends up doing is just kinda lazy. They'll mention meddling kids, have Scooby exist as an acronym, but it's all just super surface level. So if you already come into this with a combative mindset that this show doesn't like Scooby-Doo, it kinda can come off that way as it really isn't adding anything. Instead, it's just holding up a poster and smirking at us. And like the closest thing that the references get to getting an actual laugh out of me is when they do the classic Scooby-Doo montage where they're running through doors, but then stop, and then it just makes a lazy choice of pointing out that this shouldn't be possible, and then it just moves on. This is not offensively bad comedy. I have seen so much worse. But when half of the humor is this, and the other half doesn't work because the characters all suck, it's hard to care about any of it. And that makes the attempts at being coy like the 420 line feel empty at best and mocking at worst. And you can't just say, oh yeah, this is meta humor, move on. It's like, no, the constant meta humor forces us to engage with it on a meta level. We are constantly being made aware that this is a reboot. 
that these are new interpretations of the characters, all while the show drags the internet's preconceived notions about this franchise. Oh, it's Velma. Interesting, she's gay. Like, I don't hate this show, but I don't care for it either. But there's just something aggressively hollow about how it handles being a Scooby property. Like, I'm sure this was originally planned to be an original show that got pressured into retrofitting itself into an existing IP. That's the industry. You want to get greenlit? Gotta do it. But I do think that the Scooby brand doesn't fully gel with what the writers wanted to do. So much of the show wants to make fun of the CW, all the mystery teen drama cliches, all the shots at gratuitous nudity, the bad girl cliches, the dark and troubled past. It's mocking this genre, but that is not Scooby-Doo. And that just contributes to the tone dissonance that this show just never fixes. I think this show is a visually well-polished but dysfunctional mess, with the backlash unsurprisingly getting blown way out of proportion as hating the show became the internet's new identity. It's High Garden Spice all over again, a mediocre show that people will never stop shit-talking when it's really just not worth it. Velma does have the occasional funny moment. Everyone slowly becomes more bearable as the show goes on. Fred is the highlight. But even trying to view this as more of a character-focused story about Velma growing into a better person, I don't care. With the show seemingly being hell-bent on me not caring about her, as she's just never given the breathing room for us to actually get behind her as the lead. If you like this show, awesome. If you hate it, I get it. But for me, this show is trapped fighting itself with a style of comedy that I don't care for, and when most of the show is spent failing to make me laugh, I really can't recommend it. Exactly. I spit truth without a filter, like every comedian before hashtag me too. That's it. That's my thoughts. Like, share, and subscribe. Appreciate everyone. I'd say give me your thoughts, but I think I know them already. If you liked it, tell me why, though. If you didn't like it, yeah, sure, tell me why. Let's hear it. Love you all. Peace out.